Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with eggnog. That's right, have you ever been eating a bowl of custard and thought to yourself, this is good, but I wish I had more nutmeg, and also I'd like to be able to drink it. Well, good news. This iconic Christmas beverage might be just the thing. And I know I did do some recent anti-eggnog tweets, but I was mostly down on the store-bought kind that tends to be way too thick and too sweet, and not to mention doesn't contain any whiskey. So I thought I'd go ahead and show you how to make the real stuff, which is completely different than the stuff in the carton. It's actually quite delicious, and this is how you make it. So the first thing we're going to need here is a whole bunch of freshly grated nutmeg. And usually because we're just using a pinch, we'll just grate a little bit into the sauce, or whatever we're using it in, and that's it. But in this case, because we need so much more, and we have to measure out like three quarters of a teaspoon, that's going to be too hard to determine just by grating it in. So that's why we're going to simply grate it onto a plate, and that way we're going to be able to get a little more accurate of a measurement. So we'll go ahead and we'll grate our nutmeg, and set that aside until we need it, at which point we can move on to operation separate four eggs. So for our nog, we're going to need four egg whites and four egg yolks. And the last time we did this, I used the through the hand method. But several viewers pointed out that the oils on your hands could affect the whipping of the egg whites, which I guess is technically true, although that's never happened to me. No matter what method I use, the egg whites seem to work fine. But anyway, I did use the shell to shell method nonetheless. And one quick thing I wanted to mention, it's always okay to get a little egg white in your egg yolk, but you never want any yolk in your white because that fat's gonna prevent them from whipping up, okay? But anyway, we're gonna separate four eggs and then start doing stuff to them. And the first thing we're gonna do is add some sugar to the yolks and take a whisk and mix that for about a minute or until the mixture kind of lightens up and gets a little creamy and looks like this. At which point we can go ahead and add our dairy in two forms. We're gonna do a couple cups of milk as well as a cup of heavy cream. And we'll go ahead and give that a stir. And then what we'll do is we'll take this mixture over to the stove and place that down on medium heat and cook it whisking very often until it reaches a temperature of between 170 and 180 degrees which to a bare fingertip is gonna feel very hot and almost too hot to touch. So that is how some people tell, but that is obviously very unscientific. So my preferred method, of course, is to use a thermometer, thereby taking all the guesswork out of it. And sometimes when we're cooking similar mixtures, we can kind of watch to see when it thickens up as an indicator for when it's done. But because we only have four egg yolks here, and that's a lot of liquid, the viscosity is really not gonna to change too much here, okay? So we really do wanna check with the thermometer so like I said, we're going to keep that on medium heat, stirring quite often, until we hit our target temperature, which I said is about 170, 180, at which point we can quickly and carefully remove that from the heat. And while the mixture is still piping hot, we can stir in our freshly grated nutmeg. And then once that's set, we can add another key ingredient, which some crazy people consider optional, but I don't, and that would be the whiskey. So I'm going to add two splashes of some nice bourbon. Some people do go with rum, but I prefer the whiskey. But of course, that's up to you. You are Kermit the Frog of your Christmas eggnog. And speaking of being green, don't drink too much of this. An eggnog hangover is not recommended. So we'll go ahead and we'll stir in a little bit of booze, at which point we need to cool this down and refrigerate it until very, very cold. And to speed up that process, I like to cool mine in an ice water bath, except I don't waste any ice. We need to save that for the cocktails. So if you use a nice big bowl and lots of cold, fresh water, just give it a stir once in a while, and that's going to cool down very quickly. You'll see. And by the way, I wanted to mention, a lot of the cool kids are doing non-cooked versions of eggnog. And there's actually no heat involved. Everything's done by whisking and emulsifying the ingredients together. But while you can get a similar texture, I really think the cooked version tastes better. But as usual with these kind of theories, there's no way to prove them. And then what we're going to do when our mixture cools down to room temp is transfer this into some kind of container. And I like to use this glass pitcher, which is not only going to allow me to chill this, but there's also going to be enough room in here to mix in my egg whites and serve right from this same container. So we'll transfer in our now cooled custard mixture, and we will pop that in the fridge for a couple hours or until thoroughly chilled. At which point we can move into final production, which starts with our meringue. So we will take our four reserved egg whites and start to beat those with a whisk, just until we get some very, very soft peaks forming. Something similar to what you see right here. And once it reaches this stage, what we'll do is we'll sprinkle in one tablespoon of sugar and continue whisking until we have stiffer peaks. Okay, we don't want to go too far, but we do want to whip it until it's at least this stage so that those egg whites will hold a peak like that. All right, sometimes I refer to this as the shaving cream stage because that's pretty much what it looks like, or at least back in the day when there was shaving cream. But anyway, once our egg whites are whipped up, we can go ahead and stir them into our now very, very ice cold custard base. 
Just whisk it right in. Don't worry about anything like folding. We're not doing a souffle here. Just mix it all together. And believe it or not, our eggnog is done. And yes, if your custard base was super ice cold, you could enjoy this now. But really, I think it's best if you put it back in the fridge and chill it thoroughly again. And while a lot of that frothiness will dissipate as it sits and chills in the fridge, I think the taste and texture of this is better if you do chill it thoroughly again. But either way, when you're ready to serve, we will transfer that into some appropriate cup or mug. And what's going to happen as you pour that in? This thin but gorgeous layer of meringue is going to form on the top, which should give us that classic eggnog look. Speaking of which, it is mandatory. We will finish this with a little extra grating of fresh nutmeg. And our eggnog is officially ready to serve. And by the way, I know that looks like a nice leather placemat, but it's not. It's not real leather. It's actually nagahide. Oh yeah, some of these just write themselves. But anyway, that's it, your classic homemade Christmas eggnog. If you've never had the real stuff, imagine a luxuriously textured bourbon spike custard being sipped through a thin layer of nutmeg-scented meringue. I know, that does sound delicious, and it is. And I really should have shown this earlier before I poured the first one, but you must whisk this every time you pour. And that goes for re-pours like this, as well as whisking it very thoroughly before you pour that first one. And that way you're always incorporating those whipped egg whites back into the mixture, which really does give it that beautiful, smooth, but not too thick texture, okay? And hey, if you're going to top it off, you might as well really top it off. And yes, that will be the most popular question after this is posted. Do I have to put the booze? Can you do it without the bourbon? Well, of course you can, but you shouldn't. Not only does that bourbon add an important flavor element, but at the Christmas party, it's going to make everybody's story seem a little more interesting. So there is that to consider. But anyway, that's it. How to make homemade eggnog. Whether you're going to make it for the Christmas party or just the next time you feel like drinking dessert, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.